Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new, welcome. So I know a lot of people have been pretty eager to know what my theme is for October, and October is going to be Oldies October, which means that every case that I cover this month is going to be very, very old. I'm talking 1800s to early, early 1900s. This is a French case from 1922, and I gotta say that I may possibly mispronounce a few words because my two weeks of French Rosetta Stone back in like 2015 didn't really help me with this one, so just bear with me. This is not going to be a super long video because there's not a lot of information online about it, but I tried to gather as much as I could for this video. It is a case that, while hearing about it, you kind of forget that it actually happened because of how twisted it is. It almost sounds like a horror movie, like it was written out and directed this way and everything was kind of made up because it's it's hard to even fathom that something like this could ever happen. So just get a small snack or possibly run a lavender bubble bath because this one is going to be quite stressful and let's just get into it. This is the bizarre case of Pauline Picard. In early April of 1922, two-year-old Pauline was playing on her family's farm located in a quiet village in Brittany, France. A quaint little village, a place where everyone knew each other. It was a safe place, or so they thought. This farm was almost picturesque. It was beautiful, wide open fields. It was a big property, but it wasn't a place that Pauline's mother ever feared for her children's safety while they were playing outside. Pauline's mother had just got done preparing dinner when she called outside to her daughter to call her inside to eat. She got no response, so she called again. No response. She stepped outside to see where little Pauline was. She was nowhere to be found, and this is when horror set in. Pauline's parents notified authorities pretty much immediately, and cases like this were uncommon in this area, especially back then, so they took this very seriously. The first thing that they did was they searched every square foot of the farmland, and then they moved on to the village where Pauline's family lived. And after searching for quite a while, they came up empty-handed. The newspapers coined her La Petite Pauline Picard, and anyone who knew Pauline, family, friends, townspeople, police, Everyone joined together in the search, but as the days went on, they lost hope. Even back then, they knew that the first few days of a missing persons case are crucial in possibly finding that person. And as days went on, and weeks went on, and April turned to May, Pauline's family thought that they were never going to see her again. Then, something very strange happened. In early May, the Picards received word that their darling daughter had been found all the way in Cherbourg, France. When an officer came over, he told them the child was found by authorities in Cherbourg and was currently in hospice being taken care of. He showed the family a photo of the child and Pauline's mother cried out, that's my daughter, my poor little Pauline. They traveled by train to reunite with their daughter and when they saw her, their hearts just dropped. They cried with joy, their prayers had been answered. They were just so happy. And they knew that this was her. They, they just, they were positive of it. So they boarded the train back to their home and after about two hours of being at home with this child that they thought was Pauline, they were starting to think that it wasn't. She did not seem to recognize either of her parents or her brothers and sisters. How could she have wandered so far? She couldn't understand their dialect. Doctors chopped it up to being traumatic amnesia, saying that she was being mute on purpose because she didn't really know what to say, she had just went through a traumatic event in her life, and it would take a while for her to get back to normal, but they said within no time, she will be herself again. A couple days later, a newspaper article is published claiming this child is in fact Pauline, that she's starting to talk more, and her parents brought the child outside to the area Pauline was playing when she was abducted. The child acted terrified, which many thought was a clue it was her. This child was supposedly dropped off in Cherbourg by an unknown woman, and at this time, police were also trying to locate this person, trying to find out what happened, why either her or somebody else had abducted Pauline, 
what the entire story was. I mean, you can't really chalk it up to Pauline's parents just being hopeful that this child was Pauline because everybody who knew Pauline before she had been taken thought that this was her. Her sisters, her brothers, neighbors, people in town, everyone thought that this child was Pauline until May 26th, 1922 rolled around. This next part I do have to say is a bit gruesome, actually very gruesome and quite hard to stomach. A passerby came across the body of a small child located only about 800 meters from the family's farm. The body was female, badly mutilated, in the process of decomposing, its feet and hands are missing, its skull lay nearby. The clothing of the child is folded neatly beside the body. The clothing, which was a black and white checkered dress, a navy blue jacket, and tights were in fact the clothes Pauline was wearing the day she disappeared. Everyone was in complete shock. It was like the entire world had stopped. No one knew what to think. If this body belonged to Pauline, then who was the child that was living with the Picard family? Pauline's father in particular was really the one who was in denial at first. He did admit that the body that was found looked like Pauline's. Of course, the clothes were hers, but he didn't want to admit that his child was dead and had been murdered. So he was still leaning towards the child that was living with them, that that was actually Pauline. You have to remember that this was 1922. There was no such thing as DNA testing. There was no way to tell for sure. After examining the skull, it was determined her death was caused by blunt force trauma, but after later examining the skull even more, it didn't belong to the body. The skull was far too large to be a child's. It was the skull of a grown man. I feel like when it comes to older cases, because there are less photos, there's no video interviews, there's no home videos to watch of the person who had been abducted or murdered, we become a little bit disconnected from the case. But this actually happened and you can only imagine how confusing and devastated her parents must have been. They lose their daughter, they think they lost her forever, then they get a child back who they think is their daughter, and they're getting her in the process of being back to normal, and she's finally talking, and they think that everything is going to be okay. Then a body is found that looks like it could be their daughter's, and they still have this child living with them that they have to realize is not their daughter, and then the body of their daughter that was found, it was found in a location that was searched a million times before, so the person responsible must have recently placed it there. And not only is it their daughter's body and they have to go through a grieving process, but the head is gone and there's a head of someone else. This child was taken back to Cherbourg and even though it wasn't Pauline, even though it wasn't her parents' child, they had still spent a lot of time recently with this little girl and a bond had grown and it saddened them when she was taken away. All these years later and this still remains one of the most insane cases in France's history. We still don't know how she was killed, how she was abducted, who was behind it, but there are quite a few theories, so let's get into some of those right now. The first theory is that Pauline wandered off from her home by herself and was eaten by scavengers. This theory does not add up though at all because this doesn't explain why her body was brought back to an area previously searched, why her head is missing and someone else's is there. Also, as disgusting as it sounds, if scavengers were going to eat any living thing, they're most likely going to go for the stomach first, and her stomach was fine. There were scratches on her bones, but these could have been knife marks, not done by an animal's claws. This theory wasn't a theory for very long in this case. The second theory is that a local farm man named Mr. Martin was responsible. This man did act extremely suspicious actually the definition of suspicious. Not long after the Picard family rejoiced with who they thought was Pauline, this man came to their door. He asked if they truly thought the child was theirs and then acted in a panic and screamed, God help me, I'm guilty, and ran off. He was later admitted to an asylum and was never heard from again. Authorities and doctors came to the conclusion that his ravings were not because of guilt, but that he suffered a brain injury prior and didn't know what he was saying. The third theory is that a man named Mr. Kuraman was responsible. This man also looked very guilty. This man was an umbrella salesman who also worked as a farmhand on their farm, and he was invited to breakfast at their home the day Pauline disappeared. So he was at the home hours before she vanished. From a newspaper article from May 27th, apparently he strangely acted very close to Pauline. 
He was overheard by someone telling her that he would find a home for her in another town and he was going to someday take her with him. This man was also released from jail on May 10th due to fraud. This man eventually checked out because he had an alibi at the time she disappeared. Now, theory four is really messed up, but I have to mention it because it is a theory. Some thought that her parents were responsible, that they killed her or she died in a tragic accident on the farm, and they just told people that she went missing. There was speculation that her father, Francois, had violent outbursts on the regular, but there's no way of proving that. Now, why would they take in another child, then a random body shows up with a man's head next to it if they were guilty? Why would they add fuel to the fire? I'm not sure how they were as parents, but this theory just doesn't really add up. An Algerian newspaper claimed that a family member named Ronge Remerpi, a recluse that frequently abused Pauline, had abducted and killed her, and Mr. Martin knew of this. That his quote-unquote confession was not that he was guilty himself, but he was guilty in harboring important information. That he knew who did it. This theory was only really brought up by one source. The body of this little girl was buried in a local cemetery, and when examiners examined the body, they wrote on her death certificate that her cause of death was that she wandered off and she froze to death. I mean, no matter what, she was without a head, she was without hands, she was without feet. It was murder. The child that they thought was Pauline was eventually taken to an orphanage in Cherbourg, given the name Marie Louise Pauline, was adopted out to two sisters, and sadly passed away in 1924 during the measles epidemic. They at one point tracked down a woman they thought might have been the woman who abandoned her, but this woman still had her daughter and said that the family of hers most likely left her and moved to America. They also never found out whose head it was. They never discovered who abducted or murdered her. This is completely unknown. They never had really any leads, any main suspects, just a bunch of theories. I did read online that the farm did stay in the family, so whoever lives on that land now is blood relatives to the Picard family. So I wonder if eventually they will decide to dig up this small child's body and do a DNA test. That would be amazing to finally have a conclusion to some of these theories and see if it actually was Pauline. I know I'm going to get a ton of comments from people saying, how can you not recognize your own child? And you do make perfect sense. You are correct. It is odd that you wouldn't be able to recognize a child that you birthed or that you were around for two years but you have to remember that this was not the first time this had happened. Another very famous case was the disappearance of Bobby Dunbar in 1912 who disappeared on a fishing trip to Louisiana. After eight months investigators believed they found him and returned him. Bobby's parents were sure it was Bobby. The people he was taken from though, the Andersons, claimed he was their son. They went to court, the Andersons couldn't afford a lawyer, and the Dunbars gained custody of the boy. In 2004, through DNA testing, it was proved the boy was not Bobby Dunbar. This is just one of those cases that leaves you with a trillion and five questions and really no answers. And besides it being so old and in a different language, you have to remember that newspaper articles are not always correct. They're not always factual back then and in today's time. There's also a lot of information that I couldn't find out. I couldn't find out if they went and talked to Mr. Martin again. I know that he was in an asylum for mental health issues and they said that he only said he was guilty because of those issues. I do understand that people say insane things when they are suffering mentally, but possibly he was suffering mentally because of the insane things that he did or that he knew of. I mean, he could have killed her. Maybe he knew who did and this made him go a little bit mad. That is just a theory. And when it comes to Mr. Kuraman, it is stated that somebody heard him tell Pauline that he was going to take her away somewhere. I'm not sure who that was, if it was one of her sisters or brothers or another family member or just somebody who happened to be in the house, but I really don't think it was her parents because as a parent, I'm sure they would have made him leave and forbid him from coming back. In my opinion, no parent is going to just sit there and let this man tell their kid that he's basically going to kidnap them and never return. So I don't think that they had 
any idea about this and I'm sure when they heard this they were in complete shock. Also another thing is I have no idea how long Pauline was outside for or how far away from the house she was when she was playing. It is very odd to me though that there were so many other children in the house and she was the only one outside playing. Usually when kids play outside there's other children with them so it's very odd that she was just outside by herself. This is one of those cases that I wish I could just travel to the location and get the information straight from the sources and do a video on it. I love bringing light to older cases on my channel but it is very bittersweet because I get to spread the information and you guys learn about it but with these older cases like this realistically they are probably not going to be solved. I mean, this case is 96 years old. This case isn't really considered open. Nobody is really working to try to solve this case, obviously. So much time has passed. It's just kind of lost in time. But I hope that even if it can't be solved, that possibly if enough money is put together or if the family even wants to, that they can dig up her body and try to find out if it actually was Pauline's or not. In my opinion, whoever did this, I think had it out for Pauline's family. And I lean more towards that theory. But the thing that makes me think it possibly was a serial killer is the fact that there was somebody else's head along with the child's body. That of course means that two people were killed unless they found this head somewhere randomly, which I highly doubt that happened. This is definitely one of the more spine-chilling cases that I've covered on my channel. It's definitely up there with the Black Dahlia and the Pearl Bryan case, which I covered last month. To think that anyone in this world, no matter when it was in history, is capable of doing something like this, especially to a child, is just impossible for the average person to grasp. Let me know your thoughts about this case down below in the comments. I'm sure most of your opinions are very similar to mine, but if there's a theory that you're more leaning towards, definitely let me know that as well because I love hearing your guys' thoughts. Thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day to watch this video. I love you guys so much, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.